Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Distinguished guests, the next officer, the members, the student learners, and my friends. I welcome you all to the very different session of today's seminar. So far, we have been listening to the many speakers delivering their talks and sharing their experiences in the areas of the course. This important specific to the men in the role of police in the living industries to women, born in the age of the poor, in the need and in the existence of the judiciary system, and other issues to pass the practice since morning. All these very good insights give us a new perspective. Ladies and gentlemen, for the meditation session, we are honored to have here with us Dr. Priti Lekhadeka, Deputy Secretary, Women and Child in the Department and Members Committee, as on state and the and the Chief Justice. May I now invite Dr. Priti Lekhadeka, kindly occupy the chair with us. With equal pleasure, I invite our Honorable Vice Chancellor and President of the seminar, Professor Rajan Prasad Das, to the day and thank you for being here. Next, we look forward for the presence of the convener of the seminar, for the sitting on the board of the day, and thank you for being here. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I take the honor to introduce today's chief guest for the meditation session. Dr. Kritika Kaveka, Member Secretary of Sound State Film Commission, started her career as a research assistant at the Indian Institute of Public Administration Day, and then worked as an assistant professor in the Department of Political Science at National Law University of Guadalajara. In the year 2013, she joined the Sound Civil Services and engaged in the post of Extra Assistant Commissioner in Guadalajara. She was a Circle Officer at in Guadalajara and an additional Deputy Commissioner Kamal in the year 2003. She was also engaged as the Deputy Secretary of Social Welfare Department in the 2008. She did the Emmy in Political Science from the University and also an education from the University. Besides her administrative engagement, she has brought a list of publications in reputed journals, including the Indian Journal of Federal Studies. And she also has a keen interest in the service poetry, published poems in leading newspapers, and as a news man. Now, I would like to request our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Rajini Prasad Das, to felicitate our Chief Guest, Dr. Vijay Kaveka, with a Pranam Namusa, a Memento, and a Bhutan. I would like to request Dr. Chini Shikachogini to assist Vice Chancellor Sir. On behalf of Kekin State Open University and as the convener of the National Seminar, I ultimately want to again welcome you all to this benediction session. It is indeed a great pleasure to organize this seminar in collaboration with the National Commission for Women in Delhi, as the Commission for India has been encouraging and offering such kinds of programs for addressing the current issues and challenges related to women. I would also like to state that we have received the financial support from the NCW last three consecutive years for holding webinars, workshops, seminars for the capacity building of women, particularly uh, for the state of Assam. This time, I along with my colleague Dr. Kokensitas, who is the chairman of the seminar and co-convenors Dr. Lula Gorkotoki and Dr. Saramika Senapoti, on behalf of our university took the privilege to conduct this day-long seminar with support from the National Commission for Women on the theme of the role of aspect courts uh, delivering just, uh, in delivering justice to women, dated 28 October 2022, for making the stakeholders, irrespective of gender, aware of the legal provisions which have been framed from time to time, and we try to explore how women are able to access justice, legal aids, and supports in various circumstances of their life. 
Today, Desamal Seminar was the collaborative interview of BKI, the Spanidam Lokakoti Research Institute of this university, and the NCW in Delhi. And it tried to address how issues like women's access to justice or women's limited access to justice, as well as the role of judiciary, should be addressed. Women in our society have been deprived of their rights and are often exposed to fewer opportunities compared to men, starting from domestic sphere to economic participation, political representation, employment, access to education, human rights, uh, legal protection, and so on and so forth. One more area where we need this discrimination is protection against violence incurred on them. Silent marriage, adolescence birth, and the rape of children, sexual abuse, gang rape, women trafficking, children trafficking are also widespread. Therefore, for addressing these pertinent issues more meticulously, we have invited five eminent speakers belonging to Bohati High Court, Assam Police, organizations like Northeast Network, and Women in Governance in India. The seminar began with a brief introduction by Dr. Rokinji Das, Director in Search of BKRI and Chairman of the seminar, who highlighted the importance of addressing the issues of gender discrimination and access to legal protection and judiciary support for women, and also asked the need of the hour is to have a people-centered and gender-responsive uh, justice approach to create an environment where women can seek remedies without fear of negative consequences and uh, realize their rights through timely access to justice. He also stated that through this seminar, it was trying to provide a common platform for various stakeholders belonging to the fields such as police department, the judiciary, organizations and agencies working for the cause of women and the members of civil society who together contribute to the justice same for the career welfare women as they were. In the inquiry session, Professor Nanukupan Mohanta, Education Advisor, the Government of Assam, who was invited as chief guest, provided a glimpse on the issue and current scenario of crime against women in the state. Professor Mohanta cited the current data that reflected a marked increase in crime rate across various districts of Assam. Also, Professor Mohanta highlighted the various provisions as well as issues regarding the functioning of the first trade courts in resolving cases and delivering timely justice. Rumi Kumari Fukon, retired judge, Bahati High Court, spoke on the remedial atrocities on women across the state where many a times victims suffered in silence. She provided a comprehensive idea on the provisions, proceedings, and mandates of legal structure that aim at ensuring bias free verdict, fair, fair and speedy trials, and most importantly, timely justice to women. Our Honorable President, Sir Professor Rajendra Prasad Das, delivered on the importance of women empowerment than the relevant issues of justice for women. He noted that the scenario of crime in Assam needs to be addressed and tackled by all stakeholders, particularly the police, policy makers and the government to provide timely justice to women and work to get, uh, towards creating a better society. At the end of the university session, the register of the university, Dr. Arjuri Soudhury, offered his vote of thanks and noted that the right to a just and speedy trial is one of the most important dynamics in a democratic polity like India. The inaugural session was coordinated by Dr. Swanika Senapati, the co convener of the seminar. In the first technical session, the speaker of Osim Somua, the senior advocate of Bokhati High Court, delivered his presentation on the topic of Hustrick Court, the necessity of the hour. He spoke at length about the pertinent judgments that have set the foundation for the justice delivery system. The basic premise of his deliberations were based on his own experiences and thoughts. He then goes on to speak about two theories of punishment, deterrence and reformative. As far as the nature of reformative is concerned, it is supposed to be for the habitual offenders. The speaker of the second session was Onerika Patok, State Coordinator of Northeast Network. She delivered her lecture on the topic, Justice to Women, Reflections from the Garsoot. She mentioned about the need for setting up a solid justice delivery system and the role first-track courts play in the society. 
The third speaker was Papori Setia, Edison and SP Special Brands Assam Police. Her title of the topic was The Role of Police in Delivering Justice to Women. She talked at length about the role of police have been playing in keeping the crimes against women at bay. She specifically highlighted on the different forms of crime against women, most notable among them being pissing, cyber stalking, cyber bullying, and financial fraud. She then goes on to speak about the mechanism to deal with the cyber crime, including crimes against women and children. In the post lunch session, there are two technical sessions. Bandita Sajjo, Convener Women in Governance in India and Director of Urba Harvey Educational Trust in Johar. She then got a lecture on the topic Law, Legal Aids for the Poor, contextualizing the issues of the victims with regard to social justice. She elaborated on certain reports and discrepancies in the way the legal system functions sometimes which needs to be addressed. Uh, seriously. Also, she noted the importance of understanding the struggle of victims of, for, uh, for social justice. Uh, in the, the last speaker of the technical session 5 was Aung Suman Gora, Senior Advocate Bohati High Court, who delivered this lecture on the topic, Impact and Need Analysis of the Judiciary System in the Context of Protecting Women and Girls. Um, he spoke on the importance of gender equality and the legal provisions in the case which needs to be followed in spirit and in the true sense. Also, he expressed the optimism of looking forward to the day where everyone would be truly equal before the law. So, as a commentator of this seminar, I would like to offer my sincere thanks to our Honorable Vice Chancellor Sir uh, for his continuous support in holding this seminar. My heartfelt thanks to Dr. Pallavi Gogol and Dr. Krishna Dwara Borua for being the reporters in various sessions of the seminar. I would also like to offer my thanks to my colleagues, particularly the members of the core committee and other committees of the seminars. Without those support, it would not be possible to organize this seminar. As the convener of the seminar, most importantly, I would like to offer my sincere thanks to all the participants for their active participation during the day long deliberations. Thank you all uh, and see you again. Thank you. Are two wheels of progress for the society and all living beings. 
Seeing is a case of human lives too. Every sphere of life has two dimensions. One is good and one is bad. While the definition of being good varies from person to person, the definition of bad is at times linked to violation of norms and laws set up in a society. However, the definition cannot only be confined to that because the concept of that is sometimes circumstantial and sometimes psychological too. We have witnessed several forces of evolution, development of good and bad, and our human society has progressed to more scientific and technical reforms. And our human lives progress have been coupled with advanced and sophisticated methods of crimes, crimes including crimes against women, child, being the easy target of the society. Growth, growth and development of women has been immense and women has broken many barriers to reach what they have today, yet they tend to be an easy prey, maybe subjected to due to the biological building of women. As such, laws have also been formulated now to cope up with the emerging new forms of crimes like cyber crimes etc. which has already been discussed today with addition to prevailing crimes like rape, molestation and child abuse etc. One of such steps is the setting of the past check codes for giving justice to women at the threshold of the law and at the RDS, and at present on the recommendation of the government of High Court, Court of Sessions, Judge, Additional Session Judge, and other such statewide courts have been notified as the past ten courts. And I'm sure we, after this uh, fruitful seminar, we are all aware of this. And uh, specifically, uh, to try the cases of rape, murder, women and children, for, of women and children. Again, as the earlier eminent speaker have mentioned, we have the Boxo Act and the Boxo Courts, which have been uh, specifically set up, and the government has now sanctioned. I uh, will be very glad to inform that there will be now child and environment in the Boxo uh, uh, Courts. There have been different laws uh, which have come up the protection of women from domestic violence act 2005, protection of children from sexual offenses, that is the Boxer Act 2012, sexual harassment of women at workplace, prevention and post prohibition, repressive act 2013, and uh, our various acts which specifically looks at women. With the setting of national commission for women, all the states have the state women commission and the Assam State Women Commission was also constituted under the Assam State Commission for Women Act 1994 and since its inception it has been significantly functioning to investigate and examine all such matters relating to the safeguards provided for women under the constitution and other laws. Not only this, the commission also looked into complaints and takes so much on the of matters relating to deprivation, violence, violation of women's rights, non-implementation of laws relating to protection of women, etc. There is also a legal advisory board. Now, why I am mentioning about this is because uh, while uh, deliberating with uh, people we have uh, I've come across who are not yet aware of it. So the purpose of the seminar is not just one way but it's a two way approach. Uh, there is a legal advisory board in the commission which takes up cases which are brought into the notice of the Women Commission. We have a set of, the commission has a set of uh, forms which needs to be filled up, which is not very complicated, which is simple. Uh, women can state her complaint in that and uh, on specific dates, uh, specific, especially in Saturdays are taken. Uh, the legal advisory board sits and then uh, hears the cases. And I'm also equally glad to inform that there will be a legal aid cell which will also be set up in the Assam State Commission for Women. Apart from this, the Women Commission helps uh, various legal um, awareness programs 
Well, and also ties to uh, when the, those uh, legal elements program at a very decentralized level, keeping in mind that it is the women at the classroom level who should equally understand our uh, rights and the laws which are related to her in case of violence, violation of her rights. And uh, along with this, the Commission also imparts various trainings on various fields. Having said this, I would also like to state that there are different uh, uh, compensation schemes for women which also are not uh, many are aware of. I'm sure you know the distinguished participants in this know such just for a recognition uh, that uh, there are schemes which the National Legal Service Authority, the District Legal Service Authority, uh, have uh, respective compensation schemes for victims of gang rape or rape or acid um, uh, throw that is also a very important uh, crime uh, which has been observed and uh, uh, and similarly the Women Child Development Department also has financial assistance and support services to victims, survivors of rape which includes gang rape, rape of minor pregnancy and consequences of rape, custodial rape etc. Along with this, there are uh, the one-stop centers which have now been uh, set up and uh, where uh, uh, women at space has a case to go at this. Having said this, we uh, have the laws, we have the schemes, we are uh, trying to avail the masses. Yet again, uh, the cases, whenever we see the newspaper or whenever we take out the, you know, the print or the media, we see that there are a lot of cases, various cases of crimes against women and child. So, what, as I just mentioned, let me just be citing some observation as to why this uh, situation is emerging. One, one positive aspect in this negativity is also there, that now, now in these cases are being reported. Earlier there was a barrier, there was a taboo, there was a girl, if she was molested, she would not go to the police station immediately or she would not report the case. But there is a trend, especially in Assam we have seen that here the cases are being reported, which also one way is a positivity, though it gives, uh, it shows that the uh, report of the National Crime Bureau showed that Assam has uh, um, many cases of violence against women actually in uh, first among all types. But the answer to that is also that the cases are being reported, which is, which is a positive aspect in the sense that these people are getting aware and they are not bounded by those uh, uh, barriers or taboos that you know, what will happen if I go to the police station, the society is not going to accept me and all those concepts or notions that we had earlier. But and time uh, being, uh, as just mentioned about the good and the bad notion, one specific observation is why can't we start to build up it from our home? I would just like to give an example. Like you see in the newspaper or if there is a case of rape or there is a case of molestation or infeasing, Peter was on Vaisidarapi. Where was the girl? Was she in the bus stop? But where was she? Was she in a uh, you know crowded place or an isolated place? What kind of dress she was wearing? I am sure all of us will agree to this that these are the questions which can comes up whenever there is a case reported. So my feeling is why can't at the same time when we say and we being girls like I I have been brought up Okay, our parents have been uh, uh, given us a lot of independence and liberty to girls, uh, but not equally everyone do get them. And uh, everyone, uh, most of the time, we are told 
know, what not to do. Here's a list of aspects of what not to do for girls. But I wonder if any family has such a, a list for the boy child. Why not tell the boy also? Let's see, this girl is going out. She may go for her school. She may go for her tuition. She may go for her extracurricular activities like you do. And you don't tease her at the road or you know these are the set of laws which if you violate or which if you don't follow, you will be in trouble with law. Can't you do it in the same way? Because what I feel is progress of a society is evolution as I just mentioned is a time and ongoing process. We cannot, even if we deliberately, deliberately, we create awareness program, we have the laws, yet where the mindset will go? Until and unless we don't have the change of the mindset, unless and unless, until we equally don't understand, we equally don't respect each other, that kind of a society which we visualize, or we are trying to achieve, will it be possible at the end of this day these are some thoughts which I feel that we should ask to ourselves and after the end of this session when we go home at least uh, with all the distinguished uh, uh, speakers that have spoken about also few aspects that we can think like for example, we conduct the legal awareness program for women. We always, whenever we discuss women with a participant, we always say that the for some women from village or suppose they are having it at another chat level. We always call the women because it is related to women awareness program. But at the same time, why can't we call the husband? Why can't we call the family members? And also let them know and understand what the domestic violence talks about. Or what it may be doing, what it uh, be helpful for the mother in law, for the son, or for any other members. Also, you can understand the law. It's not that they don't know, know, know the law. At times, they may also know the law, but at least if we deliberate, if we keep talking about it, then the influence or the impact may be diversified. It is a small uh, thoughts which comes to the mind and which given this opportunity I am trying to uh, share. And uh, as just mentioned that uh, long term and short term, there are various laws, codes just mentioned. There are some measures, but it is us who can actually do something for the society or for the next generation. And we always try for equality, but equal understanding only will bring an equality in society. I am hopeful that uh, the purpose with which the past trade courts have been set up for regular justice to children, to women and children will be achieved in the nearest future and uh, and, uh, and uh, with self-determination and uh, will along with all the stakeholders of the society and if we build up a common aim and purpose we will be definitely able to curb violence against uh, women and children if not totally eradicating at least we will be able to calm it down and our next generation will uh, live in a better crime society. At the end of this uh, benedictory uh, session, I won't take much time and uh, with this I would like to sum up my uh, speech and I think I have already, uh, I'm about to cross the time, so before uh, crossing the time, I would uh, once again I'd like to thank the organizers for honoring me today and giving me the opportunity to speak before the learned and distinguished guests and participants of this seminar. 
I would also like to specially thank Dr. Achyamika Sanapati, co convener of the seminar, who has constantly been coordinating with me. I thank you all for the patience hearing and, uh, uh, and uh, apologize if uh, anything might have hurt anyone. And uh, at the end, um, thanking our vital sir and uh, all the eminent um, guests and participants here. I end up my switch and thank you all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ma'am, for your insightful deliberation and observations on the issues that you have been. And you have mentioned about the role of Assam State Women Commission and Women and Child Development Department providing aid to women and assist them with women services. May I now invite our honorable Vice Chancellor and the President of Serena and Mr. Rajesh Prasadha to kindly deliver the presidential remarks. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Uh, the chief guest uh, of this editorial function, uh, Dr. Uh, Rekha, all the distinguished uh, speakers of this one day national seminar, delegates from different parts of the state and the media friends. Indeed, it is a great pleasure for me again to be present in the Varigitri function with the objective to express our gratitude, gratitude on my own behalf, on behalf of the university, I think all of you could spare your valuable time and share your rich experience with the gathering on the issue which is very important, very important, which needs urgent attention of each one of us and by the policy makers and the government to not to uh, completely eradicate the problem but to reduce the problem. Eradication of the problem is uh, in reverse time because it is an age-old problem. But if through mutual discussion, through adequate information, through appropriate information, we can definitely contribute towards reducing the problem. You know, I must appreciate the opinion given by our chief guest. You know, this can be a personal opinion. I agree with that personal opinion. Even the, the chairman of the last session, he was also pointing out the issue that equality is very important. We should not be very partial about uh, the issue. Clapping cannot be in one hand, it requires two hands. So, if two hands can join together, to discuss about solving the problem, no problem in the art can exist. It is to be managed. I agree that there is injustice to women if it was there. But the magnitude of injustice to women in the country has been declining significantly visibly. It is declining. It is declining because of the education. It is declining because of awareness. It is declining because of the cooperation of each one of us. The male counterpart and female counterpart. It is declining because the understanding is developing that conflict is not source of development. Cooperation is the source of development, improvement and peace and prosperity of the individual relationship, of the societal relationship and it's ultimately the prosperity for the nation. So that understanding has again emerged in our society, in different parts of the state, in different parts of the country. Because of which, India is becoming powerful day by day. You know, majority of the women in our country, in different states and the country, are occupying very important positions. Look at the President of India. Look at uh, the Finance Minister of the country. Look at many chief ministers of the state. Look at uh, different uh, 
senior police officials of the state. I even just saw that I looking at uh, uh, watching a film, Daily Crime. Look at the way a police officer is handling the crimes. A women police officer. It's not possible. It is hardly possible. The success behind everyone is depending upon others, whether it's male or female. No doubt, all the intervention is required. I, because in front of me, uh, advocate uh, Anjan Kumar is sitting, Bora uh, is sitting, and I know that he is one of the leading advocates of the High Court. Let me tell you that as a student of management, I have understood that relationship is always by my right. Any relationship, whether it is a wrong relationship or right relationship, it is always by my right. And if there is understanding in a relationship, you can do and undo anything understand. If there is no understanding in a relationship, then there is conflict. Anything can happen in conflict. So my emphasis is that that understanding should develop in the relationship. And that understanding is possible whenever there is education, awareness, literacy. And that is possible whenever people support it. Third party intervention we are discussing. Half track course. Third party intervention is already dangerous. Whether it is a court or a, any, any individual. You know, relationship is a binary. Whenever the court comes, court can take its own time. We have to depend upon court. Court may give a positive decision, court may give a negative decision. You court decision may not be meeting your desired uh, objective, may not solve your problems. Whether it is a wrong relationship or right relationship, that will again intensify the difference and conflict. So what I personally feel, at any level, whether at a village level or at individual level or, or at a group level, whenever there is a relationship between husband, wife, boyfriend or girlfriend or uh, anything, it should be, that should be understanding. There should be understanding, that understanding based upon experience, awareness, of, uh, education, can sort out many problems. Number one. Number two, we people. We should not add heat to the problem. We should add water to the whenever there is a crisis. Then we can sort it out. Amro, thoda da bhandra hota hai, bodhe karo, jagra karo, port ko jao. Port has its own limitation. It requires time to solve the problem. Whenever we support people, whenever we advise people properly, rather we should discourage people why are you going to work. It is a relationship. It can be sort out mutual discussion, mutual understanding. Then people may not go to court. We may not need large number of courts. You know, what is it's a public money we have to spend in the court. It is there is a lot of harassment in the court if we have due respect to court. Because what many, you know, as we have been discussing, the number of courts required to be created, the exclusiveness of the court requirement is not being met by the government. Because the government has its own limitation. We say that half track, track courts were supposed to be created for sorting out these women issues, but half track courts in different states are given different types of responsibility. As a result, they are deviating from their target, their responsibility. So, what I personally feel? With the passage of time, as I told in the morning, women are doing better than men. We have to accept it. And a new trend has emerged in the society today. People believe that a daughter is a daughter throughout her life, a son is son, TV gets his wife. So people are in need of daughter than sons in their life. Even though this concept is, uh, which was uh, deadly opposed by the people in Haryana and Punjab, that concept is now, that this statement is being followed by people in Haryana, that daughter is required. Whenever daughter is required, the required daughter is empowered. Daughters are more con confident, more comfortable, more supportive, more daring to face any type of eventualities in the society. 
So you know, the money, we, we talked about some of the issues in this issue specific to, specific to our state like Assam. That these problems can be addressed. These problems can be addressed legally. These problems can be addressed socially. Whenever it comes to address these problems socially, we people have to play a key role. We educated people have to play a key roles. We researchers have to play a key roles. Our research scholars have to play a key roles. The students who are engaged, who are enrolled in our university, they have to play a key role. Because ours is the open university having such a large number of students spread across, across the state. So we have to sensitize them. We have to think of what course of action we have to adopt so that our student can be sensitized to speak about this issue, to convince people about this issue, to sort out the issue if it at all is arising in their villages, in their uh, towns, in their colonies. So they know that we can even help the government with our villages and the state to sort out these problems. But if at all past that code is required to deliver the justice to women, government should take appropriate actions. Uh, our findings of this seminar, the discussion which has been made in this seminar by very uh, prominent people from judiciary and from academics, I think it is going to uh, give a right direction to the policy makers and thinkers who are thinking on this issue. I, I believe that uh, the objective for which this seminar was organized, this year has been fulfilled. I uh, give thanks, personal thanks, to the organizer of this seminar to organize this program in a very short notice. And I joined them just a week back. They asked me to get involved. And I am very happy and thankful to them. I am thankful to all the speakers, starting from the Chief Guest in the inauguration to Chief Guest in the validation of this program. I am thankful to each one of you for sharing your valuable time, sharing your expertise to sensitize us, to enlighten us on an issue which is important to each one of us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Chairman Prasenapati. Good afternoon, Honorable Chief Guest of the Valedictory Session of today's seminar, Dr. Priti Lekha Deka, Member Secretary, Assam State Women's Commission, Honorable Vice Chancellor of our University, Professor Rajendra Prasad Das, Respected Registrar, Dr. Arunjali Chaudhary, esteemed debaters, invitees, and distinguished participants. Being the co-ordinator of today's seminar, it is a great honor and privilege for me to propose the vote of thanks on behalf of the organizing committee. At the very outset, I would like to express a profound gratitude to the National Commission for Women New Delhi for accepting our proposal and providing us with the necessary financial support to organize this day-long seminar. I, on behalf of the university, express our heartfelt thanks and gratitude to the Chief Guest of the inaugural session, Professor Nami Kupal Mohanta, Honorable Education Advisor to the Government of Assam, for gracing the occasion despite his extremely busy schedule, and also for his succinct, insightful, and thought-provoking inaugural speech. I would also like to offer my sincere thanks to Madam Justice Rumi Kumari Kukan, retired judge of Guwahati High Court, for her excellent and comprehensive keynote address, which has set the tone of the day long deliberations that followed. We offer our sincere thanks and gratitude to all the five esteemed speakers of the technical sessions for their highly enlightening and engaging presentations, which have made the seminar a meaningful one. I am sure all of us present here have been immensely benefited from their deliberations. I also take the honor of expressing our sincere appreciation and thankfulness to the Chief Guest of the Valedictory Section of the Seminar, Dr. Priti Lekha Beka, a Member Secretary of State Women's Commission, Assam, for accepting my request and gracing the occasion. Her deeply insightful valedictory address today 
has made the Daylong Seminar truly a success. I also express heartfelt thanks to the esteemed dignitaries, distinguished invitees, and their participants for accepting our invitation and encouraging us with your presence and for your enthusiastic participation in the deliberations of the seminar. I, on behalf of each and every member of the organizing committee, would like to convey our deep regards and heartfelt thanks to our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Rajendra Prasad Das, for his constant encouragements, continuous guidance, and unflinching support to make this seminar a satisfying as well as a rewarding experience for all of us. Thank you very much, sir. I owe sincere thanks to the Registrar of our University, Dr. Orochiri Chaudhary, for his constant support in all possible manners to make this seminar a grand success. Hearty thanks also goes to the members of the advisory committee as well as other committees constituted for organizing this seminar for their valuable contribution in organizing this seminar. Special mention and thanks goes to Professor Jorgen Borua, Director of Vijay Kumar Bina School of Social Sciences, KKHSOU, for his constant support all throughout, right from helping us with drafting the proposal to finalizing the resource person, and for all other valuable contributions in organizing this seminar. I convey my gratitude to the media for evincing interest in covering our seminar. Lastly, I thank all the members of the KKHSU fraternity, our colleagues, ENBC, and the IT cell for their enormous cooperation in the smooth conduct of this seminar. Once again, I thank you all for making this seminar successful. Thank you.